Hello and welcome to Tech24, your weekly dose of digital news. Here's what we're talking about in today's programme. Is access to information online a right like any other? France's National Assembly rejects an opposition socialist bill on net neutrality. We ask just how open is the web? Is the sexy computer game that's enraged parents with its adult content? Ubisoft's We Dare won't be released in the US. Harmless fun or an advocate of unsafe sex? The debate rages online. And as per usual, France24.com's Eric Orlander is here with his shiny new gadget of the week. We're talking Tablet Wars. This is the latest entry in the Tablet Wars. It records video in three dimensions with two cameras. It's one pretty cool device. Looking forward to hearing more about that later on in the show. But first, here on Tech24, this question. What exactly is an open, neutral and decentralised internet? The National Assembly here in France this week rejected a bill on net neutrality that was put forward by the socialist opposition. The principle is that there should be a free flow of information and neither the origin nor the destination of content should be discriminated against. That's quite a complex concept, Derek. Let's unpick it a bit. Um, we were hearing from one campaigner that he said that the internet is not for sale. What does that mean? And how does net neutrality work? Well, net neutrality is one of these concepts that is very important to all of our daily lives, which is very poorly understood by most people. Now, most people, when they go online and they go to various websites, they think the web is open and free and they can go pretty much anywhere and do anything. Well, that's the way the web was early on, back in the mid-90s when it first started. What's happened over the years now is that companies, corporations, governments are all kind of encroaching on that freedom to restrict what we can see, when we can see it, and how fast it comes to us. So certain types of content are privileged above others. They're bumped down the list of priorities. What does this mean for you and I surfing the internet? Well, this is the neutrality part of the net neutrality debate. So right now, all data is neutral in countries like the United States and France. But there's a debate going on in most of the industrialized world as to prioritize certain information over others. That is, people who pay for it should be able to get their information faster than those who don't. So for example, I have my own blog. Well, I'm not going to be able to pay France Telecom or Orange or Comcast in the United States States in order to deliver my blog to you faster. But companies like Google and the big, big companies out there, they're going to say, we're going to pay in order to have our content pushed to you faster. And what that does is it creates uh, tiers of service. So you have some people who get their information faster than others. One good example is Skype. Skype is a company that competes directly with the telecom operators who own the very internet fibers that we get our information on. Now those companies, those telephone companies, they'd rather not have Skype giving away telephone service for free. So what they're going to do and what they're already starting to do is squeezing Skype out to make it more and more difficult for people to use that service to call and to make video phone calls. And sites like the stream movie content, for instance, they could also be under threat from their competitors? Exactly. So in the United States, this is a much more advanced debate than it is say here in Europe or in Japan right now, but there are services in the United States, Netflix and Hulu, for example, that are competing directly with the companies that own the internet services. So for example, Comcast now is the largest internet service provider in the United States. It just bought NBC. Well, it doesn't necessarily want Netflix to be a competitor, a movie service. So what the net neutrality debate is all about is that Comcast would like to squeeze Netflix so that its content isn't delivered as fast or it wants to charge Netflix to deliver that content faster. Is this a global concern or something that just affects us in the West? Well, it's mostly a concern in the industrialized world because in countries like Iran, China, Russia, this debate is not, uh, it's not, the net is never neutral. The net was always controlled by governments. It was much more politicized. So this is really a debate that's much more in the industrialized world than it is in, say, India, China, or in Russia. And just briefly, it seems a little bit sinister. How much should we worry about this? I mean, when does controlling a network turn into censorship? and who decides what controls to put in place? Well, that depends on what side of the debate you're on. If you're sitting in the, the corporate boardrooms of, of Comcast, you're worried right now that you're spending a lot of money to move a lot of bits that you're not making as, as much profit from. But if you're from the consumer point of view, you and me, there's a lot for us to be worried about because our information may now be inaccessible or much slower or harder to get. It is a fascinating debate, one that's going to continue to rage, I think, but it's time for us to move on now. We're going to look at France's answer to the Huffington Post, Ubisoft's cheeky adult video game and WikiLeaks in business online. It's time for our 60-second tech news roundup. 
Is the internet too leftist? Yes, according to Atlantico.fr, a news website that's just gone live in France. Inspired by America's Huffington Post, its founders hope to rival existing sites such as Mediapart from a more right-wing perspective. The Wii just screw up. French studio Ubisoft has launched a spicy video game for consenting adults on the Nintendo family console. The striptease contest and joystick spanking has had parents up in arms. About to be censored in the US, We Dare will be banned for children under 12 years in France and the UK. Julian Assange thanks you for your support. The founder of WikiLeaks has just opened an online store. Profits from mugs, t-shirts and laptop sleeves will go directly to support the site. Assange has also submitted his name as a trademark. Disclosing state secrets, it seems, can be a business that pays dividends. That's one sweet statue Google has put up on its front lawn. Yes, it's a giant honeycomb, a way to celebrate the launch of the new version of its Android software. So as we're hearing there, Eric, uh, Google's Honeycomb has just been launched. You've been playing with it. How does it compare with, say, Apple's iOS? Well, let's first start with what Honeycomb is. These are cute little words that Google has for very big businesses. Honeycomb is the operating system that goes on this Android tablet here. And there are different versions of it, and Google likes to name them after food, so the earlier version of it was Donut and whatnot. So what we're looking at here is the LG Optimus. This is the latest entrant in the tablet wars. We've known that iPad and Apple have had a very successful tablet. Well, now LG which is the South Korean computer maker. They've come out with the first 3D. Now this records video in three-dimensional video. Not entirely sure what the point of that is. but It sounds impressive. It sounds impressive. It but sounds very cool. do we have to wear cool. glasses to watch you it? You do have to wear glasses mm. to watch it. But 3D devices are coming out more and more. Nintendo's coming out with a game player that's 3D. What's also more important though, which is much more useful than the 3D part of it, is the honeycomb part. This is the Android 3.0 operating system. And what that means basically is that that's the user interface, that's all the applications that's the way the guts and the brains of this device and it's very fast very sleek and it's a real competitor for Apple's iOS so you're enjoying using it this is a lot of fun what's what I like about this device is look at the shape it's not it's too very streamlined, big very, isn't it? very streamlined very easy to hold in one hand mm. and why that's important is imagine you're on a train or you're out somewhere you really need to hold in one hand it's much easier it's much lighter than the Apple uh, the iPad what I don't like about it is got a lot of functionality which can get very confusing again that 3d not entirely sure what the purpose of that is just because you know aside from recording videos of my child uh, that's a that's a gadget so I wouldn't necessarily buy this for the 3d the honeycomb aspect of it and the sleek design of the LG Optimus is something worth considering it's coming out in mid-may in France five to six hundred euros that's, a bargain uh, or well a that's a little on the pricey side basically Apple has set the standard everything has to be cheaper than the iPad in order for people to really be convinced to buy it that is the price point I think five to six hundred euros may be a little expensive so if that is in fact the price point we don't have an official word yet I would wait till the next version until those prices come down so hold back on that purchase many thanks for your expertise Eric Orlando Eric will be back with us again next week that brings us just about to the end of this edition of Tech 24 thanks for following do go to our website france24.com for more tech news you can also follow us on Twitter tech f24 and we have a brand new Facebook page so do become a fan we just time to leave you with our video of the week. And he's well known for his long, rambling speeches. Now, a remix of quotes from Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, the Libyan leader, has been set to dance music uh, with some footage of gyrating girls, as you can see here. It's gone viral on the internet. The satirical clip is called Zenga Zenga, and it was made by Israeli musician DJ Noi Alushe. Despite Gaddafi's unpopularity both at home and abroad, the video chalked up an amazing half a million hits in just three days. So we'll leave you with that and see you again next week here on Tech24.